I don't know what went on in uh, uh, Ms. Rinawi Zouabi's uh, head, but uh, one thing is clear. This is going to be the permanent diet of this uh, coalition for the coming weeks and months. It's going to be an ongoing crisis management. Because as you can see, there's sort of a pendulum. Because of the uh, unique composition of this coalition, which has not only center parties that are relatively close to each other ideologically, it has very far right parties and very far left parties. And the moment the government takes a decision or adopts a law or a piece of legislation that goes in the direction of the far right, there is resistance in the far left. And once now Ms. Rinawi Zouabi was promised all sorts of budgets for issues that are of interest to the Arab community, you can expect next week to have resistance and pushback from the Yamina party. We already know uh, the name of the of the next crisis, it's called uh, uh, Mr. Orbach, a lawmaker from Yamina, who has already voiced his concerns about this uh, um, uh, exaggerated attention given to the uh, right. Arab community. So uh, basically this is just uh, plugging holes in a bursting dam, no? Probably, uh, probably. I mean I, I mean, I don't think that in the Israeli political uh, spectrum there is anybody who believes that this coalition can survive longer than a few months. But now it's, it's, it's uh, of the, some importance for uh, Naftali Bennett to at least uh, survive this Knesset session, which ends uh, end of July, uh, survive the recess, and then, you know, in the fall, who knows, uh, uh, when, when the Knesset comes together again after the Jewish holidays, uh, we will see. Uh, it's probably, you know, m most people think that there will probably be elections by the end of this uh, calendar year. But wh why is it important for Bennett to try to survive? Why not just break it up now if it's going to fall apart anyway and go, go to elections? It's because no prime minister wants to admit uh, defeat and uh, he announced this coalition as an important uh, um, I don't know, experiment in Israeli politics. And to be honest, personally, I think it is. I think it is, it is, it is a landmark coalition. Regardless of how long it will keep, I think it's a precedent that I hope will be repeated, bringing together parties that are not obvious uh, allies. And a first ever Arab party. And a first so ever that. Arab party. I'm quite confident that it is not the last time, including under right-wing governments, I'm quite confident that there will be Arab participants in future coalitions, not in everyone, but the precedent has been set and politically everybody knows that Benjamin Netanyahu was in uh, negotiations with the Ram party to try and get them to join a coalition under his leadership before Naftali Bennett uh, took this idea uh, away from him. So I think it's important for him to show that this can survive for a while. For um, uh, for the uh, Yair Lapid, there is an importance because he would like to reach the point where there is the switch between prime ministers. That seems to be a challenge. Right. Uh, that, that's uh, qu qu quite a it's, long road. It's still a long road. Way. It's a still long a long road. road. <laughs> but I remind you that even if this government falls, the coalition remains an interim government, a caretaker government. Yes. And if we look at the past, when we had repeated elections because <clears throat> none of the sides could uh, form a government, this time it will be under the leadership of Naftali Bennett or Yair Lapid. We've certainly seen that interim governments can last almost as long yes. as non-interim governments. There's nothing governments. as permanent as the, as the interim. <laughs> right, so that is certainly something that uh, could definitely happen. Uh, Daniel Sheck, political commentator, uh, thank you very much for coming on and analyzing the crazy Israeli political scene that just keeps getting crazier.